So today is April 15th, 2019, episode seven. This is part three of this series, 30 of the most repulsive cheating stories you've ever read and won't be able to stop reading. Number 22, painfully clueless. My brother and the delivery guy for his shop had this conversation. Person number one, have you ever had someone call you and the caller ID showed up as someone else's number? Person number two, no, I'm not sure what you mean. Person number one, well, my wife called me, but it showed up as my boss's number in my phone. Wait a minute, let me read that again. Okay. <laughs> well, my wife called me, but it showed up as my boss's number in my phone. My brother was too astonished at the denial to say anything. So that means the wife called her husband from his boss's phone number? But that's too stupid. Like, why would she call him? Like, and why would she be hanging out with him? It's a good chance that she's probably most likely fucking around with his, with his boss. But her calling her husband from his boss's phone number, she's tripping, she slipped up. That's why it's not good to cheat because you have to keep up with too much stuff. You have to keep up with all the lies. You have to keep up with all the alibis and stories and you have to be real quick. You know, you have to, you have to be on the ball like constantly. And then even after, let's say you, let's say you decide to call it quits and you're like, okay, I'm gonna be good. I'm not gonna do it anymore. You still have to watch her back even after that because shit can come up, it happens all the time. Number 23, being the other guy. I was going to propose to my girlfriend of just over a year, but then she was like, I'm moving to Boston. I got into pharmacy school. So I was like, I'll try the long distance thing and then propose to her. It turns out the entire time we were dating, I was the other guy and her real boyfriend lived in Boston. It felt bad. It's like nine years later and it still feels bad. Wow, that's that's messed up. But I wonder if the real boyfriend ever found out about him the other guy you know hey guys i apologize about the rain you know i sit in my car and do this and you can hear it pretty good and i'm sorry i'm sorry if it's distracting but you know nature calls number 24 surprise heroin addiction found out my ex was a heroin addict she told me when she was drunk one day it surprised me but i stuck with her she expressed a desire to get sober that was a pretty big shock in itself and something i struggled with for a while she was hanging out with a group of friends who were all addicts and it was bothering me to no end. She wanted to get sober but kept on hanging out with this group. One of her friends was in love with her. She told me about it and therefore I thought to myself, oh, at least she's honest about that. She expressed that she didn't feel the same way towards him and wasn't doing anything with him, dot, dot, dot. But she still hung out with him and his friends. Eventually, lies started piling up. She would lie about if, when, she was hanging out with these friends. She would lie about where she was, lie about ending up in the hospital, lie about everything. I got pissed off and started messaging this friend of hers, telling him to back the fuck off. He responded one day with a message saying, I could tell you shit that would break your heart. Oh my God. Ooh, I can't, oh my God, that's bad. Oh my goodness. I wish he gave some details though, you know? I confronted my girlfriend, she denied it at first, but I knew deep down. In fact, I knew for a while, but just chose to ignore it. She owned up to it. It was some of the worst pain I've ever felt emotionally, but what helped was to realize that there is no rational behavior when someone is addicted to heroin. It's just chaos, life is chaos. It helped me not be as resentful and have empathy rather than disdain. She ended up getting sober and we got back together. She is sober to this day, but we're no longer together. She broke up with me out of the blue one day after about three years of dating. That's my story. This one wasn't very good because he didn't give no good details. Like, like we need to know what was she doing that could have broke his heart. He says he knew for a while, but he chose not to confront it. He could have told us like what things were he, was he suspicious about? You know, what red flags did he notice? He says she owned up to it. Like, what did she own up to exactly? Like, what is it? Anyway, 
Next one, number 25, multitasking. A friend of my wife's was dating this scumbag. The friend ends up pregnant and has the baby. During the delivery, there were a few complications and she ends up needing a C-section. Scumbag refuses to own up and be with her in the delivery room. What? That's messed up. Turns out he needed to be able to go across the hallway to his other girlfriend that was also in labor at the same time. <gasps> Oh my god, scumbag had two girls pregnant and in labor at the same time. What are the odds of that? And honestly guys, sadly, this stuff happens all the time. All walks of life. White people, Asian people, black people, Hispanic people, or Latinos, whatever, I'm not sure. But you know, all backgrounds, like this shit happens all the time. And why? Why would you want all that confusion in your life? Why do people create unnecessary anxiety confusion chaos like that's all it does is just causes hurt chaos confusion anxiety you know it's just sad number 26 dating a guy in a band i was really young at the time he was my first love i was 19 at the time and he was 24. he had had many long-term relationships before and i was essentially clueless to how relationships should work how you have several long-term relationships and you only 24 years old? Anyway, I was head over heels. I would have done anything for him. Even while typing this, I cringe at the thought of that type of love towards a significant other. That kind of love is kind of toxic. When you've never loved before and you just put all your cards in and you like, when you would do anything for someone that you, that you think you love, that's dangerous and it's toxic and like you need to learn how to kind of like pump your brakes because i don't believe in that shit <laughs> i just don't it's 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 bad okay he was in a shitty touring band about nine months into our relationship they left on tour i was sad but i trusted him because he told me to one night i get a strange phone call he's hysterically crying saying that he had gotten into a fight with another band member and that he was so homesick and just wanted to come home. I thought perhaps this was normal and didn't think much about it. Flash forward a month and he comes home. Things were weird right off the bat. He was super emotional at the drop of a hat. He didn't work and I did, so he would drop me off at work and use my car. He would pick me up every day with almost an empty tank. <laughs> About another month passes and I get a call out of the blue that he's moving out. I was devastated to say the least. To me at the time, it seemed out of nowhere. In retrospect, there were signs fucking everywhere. He tells me that we're not breaking up and that he just needs space. So we continue seeing each other regularly. Then randomly, I get a message from a mutual friend saying that he's sorry for what happened and that he heard about what happened between us. Obviously now, I knew something was up. I asked him repeatedly what he heard. He won't budge and tells me that he wants to meet in person to tell me. So right before I go to meet him, I have dinner with Gutter Dick. Who's Gutter Dick? I don't know who Gutter Dick is. I guess that's her, her shitty boyfriend. He says that he needs a thousand dollars to pay off some debt. I offer to give him the money without hesitation. Okay, yeah. Gutter Dick is a boyfriend. She had dinner with him before she goes to meet with the informant. I'm texting our mutual friend at dinner and he tells me not to give him a dime and to meet with him right away. So I go, I go to his house and we talk. He tells me that my ex cheated on me with his ex and she's pregnant. Also that weekend before he moved out of my apartment, they had gotten married. Oh my God. Ooh, that's bad. But you know what? He's a scumbag. Like they probably drove to their wedding ceremony in her car. That's, I mean, wow. <laughs> I've just, that's some crazy shit. All right, number 27, eight by tens. A couple at my high school had a big blowout fight. The girl decided to get revenge by going to a party, getting blind drunk, and blowing every willing guy there. Pics were circulated around the school. The jilted suitor got his hands on a particularly graphic shot featuring his love completely nude in a very compromising situation. He blew this picture up to an 8x10 size 
printed off dozens of copies and plastered them with industrial glue all over the front door of her house and on her father's car. Oh God. A friend who lived in her neighborhood recalls watching her poor father scrape these images off his house and vehicle. I mean, I guess that's that, you know? I guess they're even now. This is number 28, the cheerleader. My best friend is gay. When, when he was in college, he was a cheerleader. The whole squad was out drinking one night and one of the girls had recently got engaged. So they were all celebrating. She mentioned to my friend jokingly that she thinks her fiance might be gay. So what does he do? The next night he goes to the bar with her fiance, gets him wasted and then butt fucks him. Then reports his findings back to the girl. Obviously she was pissed. They broke off the engagement and she transferred to a different school. honestly speechless I don't even know what to say that was quite a bit I mean I guess we could say she was right she was right about her fiance she she had that feeling that her fiance was gay and he really was he jumped at the opportunity you know don't let that drunk bullshit fool you like the drunkness has nothing to do with it if you're gay then you're just gay number 29 thanks for the support bye I'm reposting my own story here my wife cheated on me six weeks after our wedding, 17 months after a stroke devastated her body and psyche and almost crushed the spirit out of me. Just 19, okay, wait, 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 I gotta back up, okay. My wife cheated on me six weeks after our wedding, 17 months after a stroke devastated her body and psyche and almost crushed the spirit out of me. Just nine months into a too good to be true love story I had been by her side 24 seven for 15 months of rehab. I fixed us a nice dinner, finally sit down to take my first bite. And out of the blue, she says, I've had sex with someone else, exclamation mark. I freeze, raise my eyes, and she just sits there, smiling at me, still chewing the spicy mozzarella toast I made her. That really pisses me off. Just the way she she was so callous about it. I mean, he's been there for her the entire time that she was sick. And for her to announce it like that and just not give a shit and just keep eating her food. Like she was proud of herself, real smug, you know? I mean, the disrespect. He'd been through all that with her. You know, she had a stroke, you know, I mean, through the good, the bad, and the ugly, like, he still felt like this is too good to be true. He truly loved her for her. Like, he didn't care how the stroke devastated her body. You know, I'm sure she wasn't looking, you know, her best. He'd seen her at her very worst, you know? You just, you just never know about people. You think you know the person that's sleeping in your bed, driving your car, kissing you in the mouth. The person that's raising your kids with you, you think you know them, but you really don't. Number 30, the version, and this is the last one. When I was finishing up high school, I had a really rough time after several terrible breakups and decided on a semi-long distance relationship with someone I'd known for several years and was good friends with. I wasn't ready for anything too closer or in person after being cheated on a few times. Fast forward 10 months into the relationship, I'm visiting her and we decide to go to a mall in her area to see a movie and walk around. After the movie, we're walking through a department store and she pulls me into a dressing room. I hadn't had sex yet and was trying to go slow, but she was very forceful on wanting sex. I was nervous and excited at the same time and just went with it. Afterwards, we come out of the dressing room and run into one of her friends who immediately says, where's your boyfriend? It hadn't clicked yet that she wasn't talking about me. <sighs> Turns out being long distance gave her the idea that she could hide me from her boyfriend and ran with both relationships at the same time. She immediately started covering it up to save her other relationship, blaming everything on me. The following months were tough with constant messages and spam from her friends saying, I had raped her and I was crazy and that I need to be on medication and stop contacting her. Immediately stopped talking to her when she sent me suicide threats the same day. 
I had no idea anything else was going on. That ended so crazy because she told her friends that this guy was crazy and that what he raped her in the dressing room, but she's walking right beside him. The fact that her friends believed her story, that he raped her and that he's crazy, and it just seems so bizarre. And then she threatened to kill herself. Oh, I feel really bad for this guy, but at the end of the day, I feel like we can bounce back from this. So luckily, you know, he ain't got no kids with her, so that's good. Like that's what, <laughs> that's what I back up everything with. Like if you don't have no kids with them, you know, you're good, you know? you. You can skate by free, no baggage. You can just move on with your life. Like you don't have to worry about this person ever. You don't ever have to see them ever again in your life. So yes, as brutal as this was, he is going to bounce back. I know he may not realize it. Like a lot of people, they don't realize it because they don't have any kids, but um, I do. So <laughs> he'll be okay. Oh, and then the fact that he would known her for several years and he felt like he could trust her, you know, which just goes to show you that you really can't trust nobody. No matter who they are, you can't trust nobody. So that's it. We wrapped up that series. Thanks for listening and watching Cheater Stories read by me, Ebony White, on YouTube and um, whatever podcast that you're listening to. And I will see you next time.